Grifters be griftin. You ever think about Neil deGrasse Tyson when he came out? Remember back during the Felix Baumgartner jump? This was, I think it was like 2012. He came out and he did what's called damage control or getting ahead in politics. They call it getting ahead of a story. He uh, knew that everybody saw that footage and that there was two different cameras. There was the camera when they opened up the hatch door and you could see a flat horizon. It wasn't a GoPro or fisheye lens, right? There were the cameras on the outside that showed uh, a ball earth. So it was so obvious that he came out and he said this. And that dude who jumped out of a perfectly good balloon, um, <laughs> what's his name? Felix! Felix Bumgardner, uh, he would have been about two millimeters above the surface of this globe. That's his edge of space jump. <laughs> now, so, you know, I, I don't, it's fine. He wants to, I don't have a problem if he does it, but the, the honesty of it would greatly diminish what I think people thought he was actually doing. And not only that, they made sure to photograph him standing there with a really wide angle lens, which curves horizontal lines. So in the photo, you see this curvature of Earth's surface, and he said, wow, he's in space, look at that. No, he's not. At that height, you don't see, you don't see the curvature of the Earth if you are two millimeters above this beach ball. <laughs> it is, he just don't. <laughs> that stuff is flat. And then I showed examples of wide-angle lenses, curving, horizontal. I tweeted that. You did. But I don't want to be a, a spoil, you know, curmudgeon or anything. Okay. So that was back in 2012, because he knew flat earthers were on it. We were exposing it, right? All of that stuff. So then you have 2021, and you've got them going up in this, uh, this free fall, right? This vomit comet for rich people. They go up 63 miles, he says. And uh, what's funny is, back during the Baumgartner jump, this is just a side thing, he said two millimeters above, and that was 25 miles up. Now they're claiming to go 63 miles up, and he's still saying two millimeters above the ball, the schoolroom globe. Oh, by the way, you didn't ask, but I'm going to tell you. Do you know how high up above the earth he was? No. So if you take a 63 globe, miles. Oh, yeah, say so, right. So take a schoolroom globe and ask how high above it is he? So he's about two millimeters above the surface of a schoolroom globe. Mm, so nobody has seen the curvature of the earth from that height. Just, mm. I just want to make that clear. You got to update that, Neil. It's closer to four to five millimeters now, okay? Anyway, they're not going that high. You know, back in the day, Chuck Yeager did, uh, I think he flew an experimental rocket plane. Uh, it was a predecessor to the X-15. I think it was called an X-1. And they took that up in the belly under the uh, wing or under the belly of a B-52 bomber. And they also ignited the, the rocket and it dropped from the belly and it flew up. Well, they said they, he said they flew up over about 85,000 feet where the rocket plane just lost all control, right? The air was just too thin. So the thought that this Branson thing went up 63 miles up, no, no. If, if Chuck Yeager and the X-1 didn't do it, they didn't do it either. But regardless, what they're doing now again, and Neil deGrasse is the spokesman. He's the uh, front person for the damage control or getting ahead of a story. Like I said, in politics, that's what they call it. But this would be getting ahead of a narrative, right? Because, well, it's, it is a story, but okay. So it's the same thing. He's getting ahead of a story. He's getting ahead of the narrative. So he knows that people went up like this Wally Funk, and she said, I couldn't see the world. I wanted to see the world. What that means is I wanted to see the spinning earth. I wanted to see what they see from the ISS. I thought that's what I was going to see. Uh, of course, the ISS is fake too. It's all fake footage. But she wanted to see that, and all she saw was flat. Neil deGrasse says, you can't see curvature from 63 miles up, right? So again, this is damage control. He's getting ahead of it because these are civilians, right, going up in uh, these flights, and they're seeing a flat horizon. Now, for real quick, what, what would make it look flat? 
Well, you've got to remember our horizon is 360 degrees around us, right? So it's a big circle. So you could think of it as like um, standing in the center of a huge salad bowl, right? A solid salad bowl. And the rim of the bowl comes right to the center of your eye. So you can see the circular nature of the bowl that you're in. But if you put a level up against the, uh, the top of the bowl, from your point of view, being that it's completely eye level, the horizon will look flat. So he knows it looks flat. Flat earthers have put up tons of uh, balloon footage showing a flat horizon. So they know it looks flat. So again, he's just trying to control the narrative, get ahead of the story. So that when all these people go up in the Branson um, Virgin Galactic flight, or if they go up in the Blue Origins, so that they don't start complaining, oh, it looked flat. He's already put the narrative out. Well, of course it's going to look flat because you're not high enough to see the curvature. See, even though this is as high as civilians, you know, nobody can go higher than this. So nobody's ever going to be able to disprove what he's saying because the rest of it, people have been gaslighted and shown NASA footage, which you and I obviously and the average person can't go up there, but they're going to show you their video images of the earth, even though, as I've shown in past videos, uh, even all the shills here on YouTube use spinning globes in their backgrounds, and they all have copy and pasted clouds. Uh, funny how that works. So, yeah, so that's all that's going on with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He knows it's flat. He, so what they're doing is getting ahead of all the people that are going to go up in these flights and that are going to say, oh, it's flat. Otherwise, they would have been disappointed and, and it would have been a big story. Wait a second, the earth is flat. But now they go, oh, but Neil told us this already. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's not. It, 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 he told us we're just not high enough. Maybe one day we'll get higher. Well, why don't you guys go higher? Come on, Virgin Galactic. You got all the way up there. Why don't you just burst on up into space a little bit higher? Show them the spinning ball underneath them. Come on. Well, they're not going to do that, are they? Because they can't. They're going up as high as they can, about 85,000 feet, and then free-falling like a vomit comet, just doing this parabola or parabolic flight. That's all it is. So that's all I wanted to say. Um, that's what Neil deGrasse, and that's what the science grifters are up to. They're just getting ahead of a story. They're getting ahead of the narrative. Remember, the spinning ball is the root of their grift. This is what all these fake sciences, all these astrophysics and all this is, is geared around keeping this grift alive, which, you know, love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy, uh, you know, and Ken Hoven, who's a uh, creation scientist, he used to say that evolution was the root. Evolution is not the root. And by the way, that guy's a shell for the spinning ball too. The, the root is the spinning ball earth. This is what makes the Bible look foolish, and they know this, and the devil knows this, and that's why he put it up, but that's another another story. So, if we keep exposing these grifters, uh, there seems to be a, a, a lot of people waking up around the world to stuff that's going on, and they start to see that, wow, almost everything they tell us is a lie. I think they will be open to seeing that this spinning ball earth is also a lie. All right, everybody, thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.